After about 1,000 hours into Elden Ring, I came to a realization. I hadn't done a parry playthrough yet. Much like freshman year, I jumped into the parry playstyle with no idea what I'm doing and conducting no research beforehand. I hadn't had practice in parrying since the guns of Bloodborne or the Uchi Katana of Dark Souls 3. And on my first attempt, I didn't even have the timing to parry Soldier of Godric. I don't know the timing on that. I do know the timing on that, okay. Easy game. However, if there was one thing going for me, it was my build. It was a simple loadout, Misericord, Buckler, and Lionel's Armor. 60 Vigor, 80 Dex, and the rest of the points into Endurance. Enough to get me up to level 150, which I stayed at this entire New Game Plus 2 run. Now, if you are struggling finding the right timing like me, head right next to a wall and parry right up against it. When you see something make contact with the surface, that's when you have active parry frame. After the immortal Soldier of Godric, you'll find yourself face to face with the Tree Sentinel. And as I mentioned earlier, I did not look up anything about parryable enemies in this game, so by the end of the fight, I was convinced that you could not parry this guy, until I tried one last time right at the very end. Tree Sentinel can be pretty tough to parry for beginners, so I'll dedicate this section to enemies that are much easier to deal with. The enemies at the Gatefront Ruins, where you first meet Melina, are slow and predictable trash mobs, so if you have no idea what you're doing, I highly suggest starting with them. As for bosses, Lee and I Misbegotten have long, predictable swings that are easy to time, and Crucible Knights are even slower and more predictable. The fight at Red Main Castle is perfect practice to parry. The final good starter boss to practice on is Margit. He has a few swings that are easy to counter, especially that horizontal slash. Unfortunately for us, he will require two parries instead of one to get a repost. He's the first of several enemies with this trait. For example, Blythe and the Baleful Shadow also require two parries for a repost. So, now that you're in the mid-game, you want to find more difficult bosses to test your skill on. If I had to choose one, it would have to be Electo. Sure, she can hit hard and wields destined death, but many of her dagger swings can be parried with ease, opening her up for a repost instantly. Nile and summons are also susceptible to this strategy. With our high critical multiplier, the summons go down in a couple of hits, and Nile's massive halberd isn't the most difficult weapon to parry in the game. But before we get to Nile, we have to take down Morgoth, who now requires three parries for a repost. He is still manageable, but the increased use of holy weapons make this fight much more difficult than Margit. During this fight, I also found something a little bit weird. If you parry Morgoth when he is below his health threshold, he will enter phase 2 without dealing any damage to him. It honestly startled me a bit when I saw it initially. Now we head into the late game, where we have the two final bosses of parrying, Melania and Radigan. Both take three parries before repost and present their own challenges. Melania is the hardest, allowing absolutely no room for error, as one hit on you will let her heal up. And Radigan, being a bit easier, really does not take kindly to being treated in such a manner. Well, now that I know that happens, I won't make the same mistake twice. After a long playthrough of experimenting with the parry, I hope you learn how to use this mechanic also. And go from this... to something more like... this. 